In this video, we're finally going to get that platform moving. We've done a lot of setup and we just need to move the position and rotation according to the current position and rotation based off what we did before. So now that we have everything, we can start building this out. First thing I need to do is I want to get a reference to my destination here. This is my target, the thing that the designer is moving in the scene. Let's get that, right? This little handle over here. And I want to get our destination. And I showed you this before, how you can split a struct pin. We do want to get access to the position and the rotation. We don't really need the scale. So I'm just going to do that, split that open. And let's think about what we want to do. First, we need our initial position. So I'm going to drag this in. We save this off at the beginning, right? Not the current position, the starting one where we started the map. And then we are going to get this. And we want to add these two together because we want the initial position we want the uh, final position to be based off of this position. Otherwise, we're animating in, in world space, and we don't really want to do that. The math for this, if I drag off of destination location, I hit plus, you'll see vector plus vector. OK, and this is going to this is going to get us our end result. Like this is the actual world convert converted to local we want to move to this destination. So we want to be able to say, you see how this isn't, it's uh, 0, 0, 00280, whereas world position would be like, you know, whatever this thing is plus this other amount. You see location, it gets pretty funky and, and all over the place. We want to be able to have this zeroed out so that we can animate, you know, exactly 100 upwards or um, or whatever. So we're just doing that calculation here to make sure we do that. So to do that, we're going to add the two vectors. I'm going to disconnect this and pull it to the bottom. Just, I don't know why it bugs me so much. Um, we're going to add these two X, Y, Z, right? Our vectors together. And then once we do, we want to lerp the vector. And specifically what this is doing, this will take in an alpha. If you give it two positions or two vectors, it will take an alpha and based off of the zero to one will give you something in between those two positions. So every single time, remember how we're changing this one or saving it off, right? I'll just get a alpha over here. And this is changing constantly, but this is just an easier way to access it. I'm gonna pull that into here and this should be, be between zero and one. And if we give it a starting position and an exit as our two points, when we hit 0.5, it'll give us in between. If we hit 0.8, it'll give us almost at the end. And during our timeline, we're just going to change this as it's going from 0 to 1. So that's what that would look like. It just needs an um, end point and a start point. That's all we really need. So we're just going to compartmentalize this a little bit. OK. All right, now let's handle rotation, which is pretty similar but slightly different. I'm going to get access to my initial rotation, which again, we saved off in the startup here. Get my initial rotation. And we have our destination rotation. This one's rotations are just really weird. Instead of adding the vectors together, I need to combine them. So I'm going to pull off of this and type in combine rotators. You'll see because it's so complicated, they gave you a little handy function here. So I have my first one, I have my second one. Okay. So we combine these first of all. And then once we combine them, pull off of here. And we'll say uh, lerp rotator. So th this is a lerp for a vector. This is a lerp for a rotator. Again, I'm going to disconnect this and just, it, it doesn't really matter. It just needs to. Um, but I think this visualizes it better. So we're going to take our starting rotation. We're going to have our combined rotation right here. And uh, so this can be our end rotation. And then the result of that, we're going to pull into something. Another way to think about all this, given our animated 0 to 1 value, this will return the position between our initial and our destination at this point in time in the timeline. So we did all that just to, to come to that. Off of set, Right? We still need to do the next thing. We want to call a set relative 
and we're doing relative so that we have the option to animate in zero transforms. You could do this in world, but it, again, it gets complicated and um, sometimes not as modular. Set relative location, and we could do this, or we could do and rotation, which is what I want, this bottom one right here for static mesh. The option here for static mesh just auto propagates it. If this doesn't happen for you, just you know say this is the thing I wanna move. And we are taking an object, so our static mesh, and we are setting its location and rotation according to this position and this rotation. Uh, don't worry about sweep or teleport. This is if, if you wanted some extra collision checking, which we should not need. And you know what? I think, I think this might do it actually. Once we have all this set, uh, we had our initial, we had our destination and we can use that to calculate, pick our initial, Combine with our destination to animate from zero to um, whatever the destination is. So start on zero. And then do the same thing with the rotation. So have our rotation be one, have our destination be the second, and then return that. And then based off, oh, actually here, we, we did miss something right here. Our lerp alpha, we could, you know, just to show you, we can copy, paste this. We want to lerp our rotator based off of an alpha, otherwise it's not gonna animate over time, right? We're animating and changing this value over time. Okay, so once we have that, compile, save, cross your fingers. I hope this works. Otherwise we'll have to troubleshoot, hit play. Cool, all right. See that? You notice it's not reversing, it's just moving. We never told the timeline to reverse, but you'll notice this other one did not move up because we did not set the indicator. So just to show this modular design on, on this one, maybe we expand the destination and instead of positioning it in the viewport, you see how everything's zeroed out. We could we could do it here instead. You know, we maybe we have an exact position that we want to go to. Uh, maybe we just do something a little off kilter here. Um, something like that. And you know what, just to be crazy, why don't we rotate it too? We'll do uh, 90. So what happens? Whoa, we're we're flipping the player off the platform, which we don't want to do. So we'll uh, instead of that. Uh, and this may be a case where, when if rotations, you're just like, yeah, you know what? I just want to use a handle. That's fine too. Okay, so looks like that was Z. Save, play. <laughs> you know, interesting. Um, but you know, maybe we want to make some more complex platforms that are rotating or. Um, scaling and different speeds and things, which we'll get to. But yeah, like we have our platform moving, it's just not moving back. So I think that makes sense to tackle next. But for now, we technically do have a moving platform if you wanted an elevator that you, know, you hop on it and you hit the the input button and or a trigger on here or something and it moves upwards. You could do that. You could definitely expand this into that, but we'll make this more modular and have this a looping design.